Hello there, this is John Hall from Right Here Pens in Shrewsbury with another video pen review. And the first thing we want to do is look at the box, which I will shortly bring to your attention. Not very exciting, I'm sure you'll agree. If we have a look inside it, we find a leaflet. Leo Scribent. Who are they? Maybe you know, maybe you don't. We open up again and we see slightly more interesting than the outer. Nice logo. But again, not a box to launch a thousand dreams of pens. But here we are. This is what's inside, and this does actually very much do it for me. A very nice looking pen. There we are. And you can see at the end the Cleo Scribent symbol. So, a little bit about Cleo Scribent. They're a company that's been running since the middle of the last century, actually. They started towards the end of the Second World War, just outside Berlin, actually. Um, when Germany separated after the Second World War, they found themselves in the eastern part of the country, the German Democratic Republic, and they continued to develop the business and, in fact, managed to make a lot of very good quality pens for essentially Eastern Bloc companies. They were big in Cuba, which is a fairly cool thing these days, I suppose. But in recent years, um, they've continued to do very high quality work um, producing their own pens, which I've got to admit in the past I've not found terribly interesting. Um, but actually doing a lot of work for other pen manufacturers in terms of finishing nibs, uh, doing a very delicate bicolour nib manufacture process, and all that sort of thing. A bit behind the scenes, very high tech, very clever, but not making the best of pens. But anyway, I think they've decided to come out of their shells because I got a letter from them um, earlier this year. They'd been at the Frankfurt Paperwall show um, and had got in touch with people that had done business with them in the past. Now, actually, we had done business with them in the past. They produced, um, I think it would be unfair to call it a novelty pen because it had actually on it a very useful vernier scale and we used to sell quite a lot of them. Um, beloved of heating engineers and so forth, I think. They could make notes and measure things at the same time. By the way, a vernier scale. Um, for those of you not born in the earlier part of the last century, you just need to look it up somewhere, I think. Probably on the same page as slide rules. Anyway, to continue, um, they sent me a letter and showed, sent me a catalogue and actually some of the pens look really nice. And one thing I never had any doubts about was that the quality of the stuff was pretty good, so I was interested. So let's take a look at this and see whether that interest is justified. Okay then, first things first, it looks really nice. But what's this material? Well, it is, in fact, ebonite, a material beloved of pen manufacturers in the last century. Um, ebonite is a sort of hard rubber. It's gone through a process of vulcanization whereby it's heated and um, sulfur is added to it. And you get a fairly hard, but actually tactilely quite pleasant material. Those of you that are into vintage pens will be very familiar with Ebonite and might be slightly surprised that there's a company still using it today. But you can see why. You can see why. This is very attractive. Sort of wood grain effect with it, really. So there we are. Now, it's a piston filler. So, should one wish to fill it, which I'm not going to today, of course, because I would hope to sell this to someone. I don't for a moment think they would be terribly pleased if I'd already filled it. 
So basically you take off the blind cap there and then you have the piston mechanism inside here. So turn, 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 it's the bottom, turn, turn, and turn, comes back up again. And we've tested it and the ink capacity is pretty good. Once you've finished it, you just screw this back on. And there we are. Okay, this is the cap. A very elegant clip, I'm sure you'll agree. I mean, I really like that. It's a nice bit of engineering and works really well, won't snag on your coat pocket or anything like that. Um, this has been rhodium plated. In general, a very tasty job. And if you look around the centre there, you've got inscribed, uh, coming in and out of focus, clear scribbled. Right, now, let's have a look here. I right, should so take the cap off and we see and I did mention that they'd been doing a certain amount of work. Look at that. Hold that in focus. Now that's a bicolor nib if ever there was one. Marvellously detailed work on it. Um, and I think in a moment we'll probably have a go and um, do a little bit of writing with it. But what you will see is the beautiful work. I mean, again, it's the clear Scribent logo on the nib. Um, the nib's actually 14 karat gold, so everything in order, everything the way it should be. Uh, I'm tempted to linger on this image, actually. It's beautiful, isn't it? But I do want to draw attention to the back end of the pen, where the cutaway enables it to be very firmly posted and gives you a very nicely balanced pen. There we are. Now, this is the brown, but one's cut right over because they also do what they describe as purple black. And here we are, and that's it. Exactly the same pen, but again, you'll see all sorts of interest in it. And there we are. Well, one of the things about ebonite, actually, is that it's always warm to the touch, so you, you don't get that unpleasant sense when you're picking up a plastic pen sometimes that, you know, it's got cold or metal pen or something like that. Um, so, um, really just very, very pleasant, very classy feel to it. Very classy feel to it. Let's have a look and see how they write. This one has a fine nib. And clear scribent do three nib sizes, fine, medium, and broad. Um, fine. There we go. It's been pointed out to me that my handwriting would embarrass an inebriated arachnid. And I'm afraid there is some truth to that. This is the medium nib. And it's a happy medium. It's also a very soft medium and a very smooth medium. I can really imagine spending all day writing away with that. But wait a bit, let's just put a quick comparison down here. So there we go, see what happens when that dries. Now this is the broad. And as you can see, I keep going on about what a nice looking nib it is. And you can see there a fairly chunky end to it, so I think we're going to get a decent bit of line variation here. That's nice. So, three nibs, certainly definite difference in line width between them. Probably not too much between the fine and the medium, but the broad certainly would be a broad in anyone's book. Let's just have a quick look here. There we go. Yeah, sorry about my handwriting. I do my best, and it's not very good. So there we have it, the Clio Scribent Ebonite Piston Filling Pen. Um, it retails at £399. 
I think looking at what else is available in that sort of price range, that's pretty reasonable actually, not bad at all. Um, it's a pen that I think oozes quality. Um, it has a sort of old world charm, I suppose. Anything involving Ebonite is bound to feel a bit, a bit retro. And I suppose the design is a bit retro as well. But how it's a fountain pen, what do you expect? So it's on our website now, if you're interested. Go and read a little bit more about it. There's a bit more information about it there. And um, if you want to buy one, we would be absolutely delighted. So I'm John Hall. Uh, this is Right Here Pens in Shrewsbury. And thank you very much for listening.